Science doesn't always move at a breakneck speed. Sometimes it pays to take it slow. Hey guys, what's up? Trace here with some D news for you. They say we have a shorter attention span than we used to, that we're a microwave culture. We want things now. Not later, except for maybe now and later, because, you know, those are like a temporal paradox, because you want them now and later. Never mind. It's time to stop and appreciate that some things just take a while, like science. For instance, have you heard of the pitch drop experiment? It's been going on for like a glacial 86 years. In 1927, the first professor at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, Australia, set up an experiment to show that pitch, a derivative of tar, once used for waterproofing boats, appears solid at room temperature but actually isn't. Though it shatters like glass when hammered, if you put it in a funnel, it will drip like water. It's just really slow. It's the longest running lab experiment ever. The last drop for that experiment happened in 2000. A separate Dublin one happened last month though, that was pretty exciting. Slower than the pitch drop experiment is the collection and modeling of harvesting data. A place called Rothamsted has been studying the effects of fertilization on the yield of wheat since, oh, 1843. Just 170 years of data, no big deal. From this, we're learning how nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, magnesium, and farmyard manure affect the output of wheat, barley, legumes, and other root crops. Slower still is the study of sunspots. Yeah, the spots on the sun, they're important. Shut up, they're important. Sunspots have been observed since the invention of the telescope 400 years ago. Galileo was drawing sunspots in 1612, though he didn't know what they were really. In 1848, a Swiss astronomer named Rudolf Wolf made such an accurate observation of those spots that his calculation is still used today to get the international sunspot number. Now this science is so slow, that literally dozens of generations of scientists have studied sunspots knowing almost nothing about them. Their magnetic fields or their effect on the planet, nothing. Sunspots were used to find out how the sun rotated, and the observation of them allowed us to see the very first solar flare. Now the Solar Dynamic Observatory is watching the sun all day, every day, and we are learning reams of information about our star. Thanks a lot, Galileo. The point is, slow your goats, science. A long study or longitudinal study is sometimes the only way to get reliable, accurate measure of some things, like brain development from childhood to adulthood or how social structures grow and change. Today, with computer modeling, we can do some longitudinal studies more quickly, but we'll never escape slow science, no matter how hard we try. The pitch drops when it drops, guys. You can't rush it. My favorite slow science is the 100-year Starship Project. This is a purposefully slow science, and it's aiming to put a spaceship with humans in it into another star system in a century. People working on it now will be long dead before the ship even leaves Earth. Talk about inspiring, that is so cool. Does slow science make you crazy or hopeful for the future? Tell us your thoughts about this and any other cool slow science experiments, and we'll see you next time on D News.